WFSB, this is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, March 21st. I'm Nicole Nalepa with your top stories. We are tracking some developing news right now in Meriden where a deadly double shooting took place. We know that a man has died and a woman is recovering in the hospital this morning. And our pinpoint news tracker shows you exactly where this all unfolded. It was right on West Main Street around 6 last night. Police tell us that both victims were found inside a car and that the woman is ex expected to survive. Meriden police have told us that the victims likely knew their shooter and that everyone involved has been located, but at this point it's still not clear if an arrest has been made. Investigators say that they are continuing to sift through the details of the double shooting, but they stress that there is no threat to the community. And right now, investigators in Waterbury are trying to identify the man who was shot and killed on Hill Street Sunday night. Eyewitnesses tell the crime, tell us that the crime was committed right by an apartment complex. Police say that they responded to the scene. The victim was already dead when they arrived. And at this point, officers have not named a suspect or provided any details about what led up to the violence. Also, staying in Waterbury, police are searching for the driver involved in a hit and run. A 61-year-old man was hurt in the crash, which happened right at the intersection of North Main Street and Kingsbury Street last week. Investigators are looking for this blue car that you see on your screen. The victim has not been identified, but police tell us that he is still recovering in the hospital this morning. The Electric Blue Strip Club in Tolland is back in business this morning after it was abruptly shut down just days ago because of a prostitution investigation. The club is allowed to legally stay open as long as they file an appeal against the 30-day suspension imposed by the town. Electric Blue's owners deny any prostitution happened at the club, and the date of the appeal hearing has not been announced yet. We also continue to follow new information about that deadly crash in New York State just over the weekend in which four Connecticut kids were killed. A vigil was held last night in Brooklyn where friends and family shared hugs and released balloons to remember those young lives that were lost. Police say that they do not believe that speed was a factor, but it does appear that the 16-year-old driver may have fallen asleep or was distracted behind the wheel. And we are going to continue to update you on this tragic crash which took place again in New York State right on the Hutchinson River Parkway. We also have wild video from West Hartford where a man was seen doing donuts right by the intersection of Talcott Road and New Park Avenue around 5 a.m. Friday morning. You can see in this dash cam footage that the officers put their lights on to stop the car, but the driver then took off. Police were able to eventually pull the car over and they identified and arrested the driver, 22-year-old Chance Mendez, on multiple charges. All right, some good news now. The UConn women's basketball team continue to push ahead in the NCAA tournament. Their win last night has secured them a spot, their 29th straight spot in the Sweet 16. They won against Baylor last night, and the final score was 77 to 58. Now, again, they move on to play Ohio State Saturday in the Sweet 16, and that game will be in Seattle. Tip-off is at 4 p.m. And then the men's team also still on the hunt. They take on the University of Arkansas in Vegas on Thursday at 7:15. They are in the Sweet 16 as well. This is the men's first time since 2014. Turning you now back to some more headlines. We have some new updated information on a plane crash that happened in January at Brainerd Airport involving a small kit plane. Now investigators say the entire incident was caught on camera and records show that the pilot reported landing gear problems after a failed first takeoff. The plane then rolled ejected the pilot and crashed during the second attempt hurting the pilot. Federal investigators are continuing to examine the plane's engine. And speaking of planes and other things that fly in the sky, Stratford-based aviation company Sikorsky Aircraft is undergoing some staffing cuts. They tell us that the parent company, Lockheed Martin, will be cutting salaried workers. Now, the exact number of cuts is still unknown, but this is a part of the 800 jobs that Martin is eliminating in their rotary and mission systems business segment. All right. The forecast. Let's send it on over to Mike to tell us some more good news. Hey, Nicole, we've got some great news. You know, spring 
began yesterday, the first full day of spring today. Uh, we ended up with 12 hours and 9 minutes of daylight yesterday. So compared to the winter solstice, we've already gained 3 hours and 2 minutes of uh, daylight. And by the summer solstice, we still have another 3 hours and 5 minutes to gain. The days are getting longer and warmer. Crocuses popping up, some of those uh, early risers, crocuses, some daffodils starting to pop up out of the ground too. And as long as we can keep the momentum here of some milder days and warmer nights, they should survive just fine. And we certainly have some mild weather on tap over the next several days. High pressure and control hanging out with us. But we have to watch this storm system right here as it moves closer to the Great Lakes region. Here's a time lapse from our ICAM uh, in Kent. Or rather, here's a picture from our ICAM in Kent of the sun rising this morning. Temperatures in Kent uh, uh, in the 20s, 23 down Winstead, too. 28 in Berlin, looking at 35 in Storrs, 34 in Wolcott. Here's a live look on our ICAM in Winter Locks. The sun just peeking over the horizon, 27 degrees and calm at Bradley. A live look on our ICAM in Middletown with the sun rising up over the Connecticut River, looking here to the southeast. Just a beautiful day across the state. We've got one more sunrise to show you. Here's the scene in Old Saybrook right now. Deep blues followed up by some oranges closer to the horizon as the sun moves over uh, the horizon there in the southeastern part of the, uh, rather from the southeast as well. Keeping an eye on some showers to our north, not really a huge issue. Those will fizzle before they even reach us. The forecast for today uh, and future cast showing quiet conditions. In fact, we end up with full sunshine again. It's not until tonight where we bring back some of those higher clouds, likely lingering cloud cover into the day tomorrow. We become a bit more cloudy tomorrow evening, especially out ahead of the potential for some rain on Thursday. But still, even with full sunshine today, uh, temperatures will likely be running above average by about 10 degrees, expecting inland high temperatures to top out in the uh, upper 50s at the shoreline with a bit of a sea breeze, more like the mid 50s. And this high pressure up to our south just keeps pumping the milder air in. So Wednesday, tomorrow likely a little bit warmer than today. By Thursday, though, we watch this uh, storm system near the Great Lakes. The warm front lifts to our north, but we see some rain showers develop out ahead of uh, the cold front. And these could work their way into Connecticut later during the day on Thursday, expecting scattered rain showers to develop. Now, the American and European models yesterday for Saturday had vastly different solutions. But uh, what we're starting to see now at this point in time is the potential at least for some mixing at the onset of precip on Saturday. But both models are showing that we uh, instead of differences in timing and when the rain moves through, both are showing the showers developing during the morning and lasting into the afternoon and evening. Here's a snapshot of five o'clock on Saturday, rainy across the state and feeling a bit raw outside too as the breeze picks back up. Another surefire sign of spring though is that by Thursday of this week, so two days from today, our average high temperature for the heart area climbs to 50 degrees. April 14th, average high climbs to 60 degrees. So the weather that we'll be experiencing over the next few days is more typical of mid-April. By May 8th, that number becomes 70. So to recap all of this, mostly sunny today and milder. We've got a lot of fuel for fire outside. It's going to be very dry and sunny. Just keep an eye on things that could spark uh, fire. As we get into the overnight hours, expecting temperatures to drop back down into the 30s, closer to 40 at the shoreline. Our early morning seven days showing 60 for the high temperature inland tomorrow, 61 on Thursday, rain showers developing, expecting 50s uh, on Friday, temps in the 40s on Saturday, so certainly a chillier day and breezy with some rain. But we do clear out for Sunday. Still breezy temps in the 50s, maybe tracking a bit of rain to begin next week. That's all that we've got here, Nicole. Looks like a beautiful start to spring. All right. Thanks, Mike, for the good news on that. We move you now to New Haven, where we've learned the school district has three finalists in its search for a new superintendent. And those finalists are Viviana Connor, Dr. Warren Morgan, and Dr. Madeline Negron. All three candidates have extensive backgrounds in education. And starting next week, all three will be interviewed by a panel of students, parents, teachers, and administrators. The district plans to pick a new superintendent by April 1st. And there's a lot going on in the state today, and we are going to start you off in West Haven, where state leaders are working to reduce gun violence in the New Haven area specifically. The University of New Haven will be receiving $1 million to help with gathering gun violence data. The money will also add support by increasing staff and strengthening data, data collecting equipment. This announcement will be made by Senator Blumenthal, and that will all take place at 1030 this morning on the UNH campus. 
And then at noon today, Hartford state leaders are calling on the FCC to help survivors of domestic violence and other crimes. They are asking the Federal Communications Commission to create strong rules for survivors to cut ties with their abusers. And these rules would allow them to separate from shared wireless service plans and provide access to a private cell service. And then taking you now to Southington, where we're learning that the Planning and Zoning Commission is holding a hearing tonight for a retail permit to sell guns. This meeting will kick off with testimony from the prospective gun dealer, following by, followed by a vote. And it will be at the John Weichel Municipal Center, right on North Street, North Main Street there, at 7 tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on your Tuesday morning. Remember, you can get news, weather, and traffic updates as well anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day everyone. Be healthy, stay positive, and enjoy this first beautiful full day of spring.